Hey Tim, what do you remember as a kid? As early as I can go back is I was in preschool. All the boys love this girl named Danielle. She's probably Latina, she had like little dark curls, I remember that. One day specifically, I, I picked a little flower and she said thank you and she kissed me on the cheek. But then later that day, that <laughs> was getting a shoulder rub from Jonathan Sabato on the slide. And I remember coming out and being like, I just gave this a flower today and she's getting a massage from Jonathan Sabato. Kim Jontarongsu was born March 6, 1986, in Billings, Montana. His family didn't stay there for long though. His family moved to Paramount, California, where his parents opened a Thai restaurant called Thai Smiles. As a child, there were glimpses that he belonged in the entertainment industry. He would practice award acceptance speeches in preparation for later on in life. I've literally been doing that ever since I was a little kid. Really? Yes. Like, oh, hold on. You have, to, you have to give one right now. I need to hear this. Literally? This is literally my opening line. I've been practicing this speech since I was a little kid. <laughs> that is the opener. Talk. <laughs> Stupid. Tim attended Paramount High School where drama class became arguably the most important influence on his life. This was where he met Mr. Carlin, a teacher and more importantly a mentor. He pushed him out of his comfort zone to help him discover his love for making people laugh. When I first went to Paramount, you know, I didn't know anybody. So I wrote this whole thing in drama class about like, I don't know if I'm actually this outgoing person, blah blah blah, I thought I was funny, but now I don't even, I can't even make jokes in class. Mr. Carlin. Uh, our drama teacher, who we all speak highly of from Paramount High, she was like, you're gonna host putting on the hits. The Paramount High Talent Show. Now we're gonna put you up there on that stage. And that was the first time I was like forced to like improv and make some jokes on stage. I always credit Carlin with kind of helping push me out of my comfort zone. Mr. Carlin even got him out of trouble once with another teacher. So I got caught selling the candy one day in Mr. Wolf's class, right? He was like, really, Tim, you're going to sell candy? What are, you, what are you selling that candy for? What, what club is that for? And I was like, uh, drama class? He was like, I'm sure Mr. Carlin would love to hear that you're selling candy in the middle of my class. Give me your bag. I'm like, shit. So I gave him my bag of candy and took it right after third period. Remember, there was a break. I ran to Carlin's class. I was like, Carlin, Carlin, Mr. Wolf took my candy. I told him I was selling it for drama. He was like, all right. <laughs> so go to Carlin's class, either fifth or sixth period. I get there. I'm like, uh, Carlin, do you have my candy? Because I knew Mr. Wolf gave my candy to Carlin. Carlin hands me a bag of money. And he's like, the kids are kept trying to buy your candy, so I just <laughs> I sold it for you. Like, well, Carlin, you are he a really real did. one, bro. Drama class. He also formed a tight-knit friend group with Pedro Flores, a.k.a. PD Flo, Eric Ochoa, a.k.a. Super Ego, and Rick Carter aka Ricky Shucks. These would be people that became integral to his endeavors in entertainment, appearing in his YouTube sketches, rap videos, and podcasts. While studying at California State University, he decided to drop out to pursue his YouTube career. He struggled a lot while trying to establish himself in the industry and worked odd jobs to make ends meet. The job he talks about most was his time at California Pizza Kitchen as a server. A lot of the stories that he recounts ended with him getting in trouble. I almost got fired from California Pizza Kitchen for sexual harassment. So there was one girl I was really cool with. Everyone was like single, everyone was like flirty, everyone was being stupid, right? And like, as she was walking out of the door, her shift was over, I like slapped her butt. She was like, oh my God, and she ran out, she went out the door, right? So a customer saw me do that, complained wanted me fired for sexual harassment. Luckily, for my manager, he talked to me, he was like, hey man, they wanted me to fire you, but I wasn't gonna do that shit. <laughs> His time there came to an end when he tweeted that the new uniforms looked lame. I was being stupid, I was literally bored at work, and someone was like, yo, they're switching the uniforms to black button-ups, and I liked the white button-up with the red tie, I thought it was a good look. I tweeted their Twitter, and I was like, yo, at California Pizza Kitchen, black button-ups are the lamest shit ever. And then someone DM'd me, and they were like, thank you for your opinion on our new uniforms, what store do you work at? And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> I deleted my tweet. My Twitter didn't have any information about me except for I had a link to my YouTube. Uh, and my YouTube sent out some Long Beach. Someone from CPK called the GM of all the Long Beach California Pizza Kitchens, and they were like, do you know this kid? And she was like, yeah, that's Tim. And they were like, you gotta fire him.
losing his job motivated him to become serious about his career in entertainment and prompted him to follow what he calls the Fresh Prince format. So I told myself when I was younger that I'm gonna do everything that Will Smith does in his career. I'm gonna do rap, I'm gonna do TV, I'm gonna do movies. Tim's main YouTube channel was once in the top 100 most subscribed of all time. His diverse body of work allowed him to gain a massive following. Let's begin to scratch the surface of Tim's channel. Dear De La Ghetto, let's go. If you're a new subscriber, you should know that I give excellent advice and I give it to you in a nice pretty little package known as Dear De La Ghetto. Weekly 16. I copied this beginning part from a YouTube comment I read, alright? Ready? Nissan Honda Chevy, Nissan Honda Chevy, Nissan Honda Chevy in my pockets kinda empty, I'm Yo, welcome back to Tim's Bakery. Ask and ye shall receive. Here it is, my hat collection. Let's go. My God, babe, our lives are gonna change forever. No longer gonna be using the name Timothy De La Ghetto. Oh, My whole career has been based around doing everything Will Smith did and being the Asian Fresh Prince, right? I'm gonna do rap, I'm gonna do TV, I'm gonna do movies. There was that episode of Fresh Prince where Will makes up a poet named Rafael De La Ghetto. His name is uh, uh Rafael De La Ghetto. <laughs> then the Rona, the Rona got me thinking. I started thinking about my legacy and I had this epiphany like if I really want to get to the level that I'm trying to get then it's not going to be a matter of them being able to pronounce my last name or not like they will have to learn my name you know what I'm saying they will have no choice but to learn my name and how to say my name I'm Tim Chantarangsi